Welcome to Passport Required. I'm Kim Covert, owner and lead travel designer at Silverleaf Travel. And I'm Gary Covert. Together, we are on a mission to help experienced travelers and would-be travelers get even more informed, inspired, and get moving so that they can enjoy great travel experiences and make memories that will last. We believe that travel offers so many opportunities to improve the quality of our lives. Travel helps us learn more about the world, ourselves, and those closest to us. It keeps us vibrant, fresh, and connected, and travel helps us celebrate life. We invite you to join the Silverleaf Travel Facebook page so that we can amplify our impact and help people get off of and stay off of what we'd like to call Someday Island. We know you're going to love this episode, so let's get after it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Passport Required. I'm Kim Covert. I'm Gary Covert. And thank you for joining us again. Don't forget to leave a review and don't forget to like my Silverleaf Travel Facebook page. So this is a great episode. They're all great, but this is another great episode about travel insurance. Yeah, it it sounds like uh, before you click off, this is really an important subject. And we are as passionate about travel insurance as we are about all the great destinations. I mean, I I get stoked about Costa Rica. I get stoked about going to French Polynesia. I love river cruises. But the whole concept of travel insurance is really one that I think people need to think about. And so listen to this one. It's it's really important. It can be really life-saving. Yeah, life-saving and, you know, really be a big impact on your pocketbooks. A footnote, though, is that I do not work for these insurance companies. I am not an insurance broker or an agent. I just sell the policies to clients. If anyone has specific questions on what would or wouldn't be covered or what would get a refund, that would need to be taken up with the insurance company. It's really going to be up to them and their claims rep of what is going to be covered, what they will pay on. This is just general information on how I feel that insurance is really important and how it can be very helpful. So let's just start off now. So you've really become an expert in travel insurance uh, over the last several years as you've worked with many clients that have had issues going abroad or some sort of hiccup in their travel plans and then also the whole pandemic thing. But why don't you highlight the the main reasons that people should have uh, travel insurance? It's for the unforeseen and unknown just like your homeowner's insurance, your car insurance. You never know when you're going to need it, but you're going to be glad that you have it when you do need it. And you, I mean, obviously you don't want to use it. You don't want to have an emergency. But also it's to protect your trip investment, the cost of your trip, should you need to cancel or come home at the first part of your trip and you didn't get to experience it, vacation, that will reimburse you for the rest of the trip that you missed. Yeah. So so two main pieces. One would be insuring the the trip itself, because you may have invested tens of thousands of dollars on a trip abroad. And I think this is even more important. Even if you don't care about how much money you know, you've invested in the trip, you might care about how much it costs to protect you physically. Absolutely. That's a very big deal. That's so, the biggest I part think, of this. I think that's the biggest. I think <laughs> the if you look at the 80-20 rule, so 20% of the importance of travel insurance is your trip itself. Mm-hmm. 80% is all the stuff that could happen to you or your loved one, whether they're traveling with you or not. Correct. And the financial repercussions of that. I do want to add that in the U.S., not all our U.S. medical plans, like our Medicaid, Medicare, whatever private medical insurance you have will cover you outside the U.S. And that's kind of what we're coming from is you're not really covered outside the U.S. Your credit card may have a little, but not as much as you're going to need if something really should happen. Let's start with a a story uh, that one of your big ones in your recent career that you had with one of your clients. One of your clients, she was on a a trip with uh, some of her friends Mm -hmm. and then yeah. Had an accident. The unforeseen and unexpected. <laughs> so she was going with three of her other girlfriends and they were going on a river cruise with Viking. And they were in the hotel that they booked through Viking and they had insurance. And one of the women was walking down the stairs in the hotel and missed the very last step and fell and broke practically every bone from hip to toe in her leg. And so she was rushed to the hospital. Uh, She was there for several days. They had to make sure that she was like medically stable. 
the insurance company pays for all of this and and managed all of this. And Viking was wonderful too as well. Uh, the three women went to the river cruise and my client was in the hotel. Viking checked in on them. The insurance company checked on her. And then she was eventually moved to another hotel because everybody on her cruise was gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that she needed to be around other Viking guests and Viking rep representatives. So they moved her. Um, but she couldn't travel until she was medically cleared. The How doctor, long was that roughly? That was like three like, or four days she okay. had to be there. And she had to be checked again, get checked by doctors. And then she ended up having to fly home business class with a nurse. And she, the insurance company took care of all of that and, and helped her manage that. And she was reimbursed for the trip that she missed because she didn't get to go on the trip like everybody else in her group did. So she was refunded uh, the money for the for the vacation. Yeah. So if you tally that up, that could have been tens thousands. of the, tens of thousands, yeah. easy, maybe even tipping a hundred thousand. I mean, trying to fly back business class and with a, a nurse, mm -hmm. it could be huge. That's that's a really big deal. So if the, those things do happen. They happen all the time. I mean, people trip and fall anywhere, mm -hmm. and or you know. have any kind of emergency. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily need to be a medical emergency, but it could be a lot of different things. Or is it a family member back at home? who, like your mother, your sister, your brother, a daughter, son, someone has an emergency and you got to fly back home for them. That's covered. You're not thinking, oh, I'll, I'm healthy. I'm not going to, nothing's going to happen to me. Maybe something back at home might happen. That happened in our family. So my dad and my stepmom, they were just about ready to start their African safari. So they've flown obviously two days to Africa and they're, yeah. they're ready to head off, you know, into the savannah and do their safari. And they get a message that my stepmother's mom had passed away. So obviously it's like, okay, we're over. We got to go, you know, turn around and go, turn around and go home and take care of things. So all that was covered, the return trip. And then also, you know, the big investment that they had made Huge. within the safari was also covered. So even if you think that you're bulletproof, <laughs> you might think about what might happen to others. And especially, you know, if you've got some elderly family members or, Kids at home. Kids at home or something, you know, you would just hate to have to make pocketbook decisions in the midst of an emergency. Absolutely. You know, that uh, might not be advantageous. And the, also the country that you're in, say Mexico. I, yes, 2000% would never go to Mexico without some sort of travel protection or travel insurance. And why is that? I mean, we're talking Mexico here. They could ask for thousands of dollars in cash up front before they, they even see you and even treat you. And that could be consequential. You could really deteriorate before someone, does someone back at home have thousands of dollars that they can wire you? Do you have that kind of money to wire to, to Mexico? It, if you have the insurance, the insurance company will help. They'll step in. They're vetted hospitals, vetted doctors. You'll be taken care of. Yeah. We've heard some horror stories uh, about that. And, you know, with your extensive network of travel agents, you've heard many, many more mm -hmm. where somebody has been seriously injured. Yes. Serious in dire medical help. And they've been asked, before we can admit you, before we can give you any medical help, we need cash. Mm -hmm. And that like $20, cash. $20,000. 20, yeah. yeah. A lot more. of money. <laughs> They're not playing around, uh -uh. you know. Cash, cash on the barrel heads. It could be mm -hmm. serious, you know, as serious There's other as you countries can that are not obviously as bad as that, but mm -hmm. you just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And you also don't know what would happen between the time you book and the time you actually fly out. Everyone thinks I'm going to go no matter what. Well, then something happens. Even a flight delay can really ruin your vacation. And within that 24-hour period of arrival to your destination, 99% of that's going to be non-refundable. So if you don't have insurance, you're going to lose every little bit of money, even so, if it's a hotel room. So give, give us an example. So somebody is about ready to go on their, let's just say a, a cruise, cruise a yeah. simple cruise. Yeah. So from Miami, but mm -hmm. they're in Dallas or Phoenix and their flight doesn't get to Miami before... The Before flight, the embarkation, the, the ship's going to leave without you. <laughs> and you're just and SOL. Most Sometimes you will be SOL because there's maritime laws and you, that ship has to go to an international port before you can get on board. There's a lot of 
hoops. If you think you can just get to the next port and join the ship, may not happen. Even a simple hotel room, and I, this has happened to some of my colleagues, they book just a hotel room the night before their cruise and something happens and they can't go with a flight issue or an illness or whatever. Within that 24-hour period, that hotel room is non-refundable. It may be small amount of money, but just to say in a bigger scheme of things, if you can't go, you could be out thousands of dollars. Or during, you know, during the pandemic, if you test positive for COVID right beforehand, you would, could lose it. Or, that, that was a big deal. That was a big deal, obviously, during the pandemic. Not so much now. Okay. But say, for instance, you're grabbing that flight in Dallas and it has a technical issue and you can't get to your destination. That's where your insurance comes into yeah. play. That's trip interruption, trip delay. Okay. So to recap here, uh, of course, to cover the investment that you make in your trip, that's an important piece of it. But I think even beyond that, the other part, which could be maybe 10x mm -hmm. the value of the trip would be things that could happen to you or your mm -hmm. other traveling companions medically. And it's a big deal. And what's the, the saying I say all the time? Don't get cheap at the wrong time. Yes. <laughs> It is, an, it is a, a little money for your insurance policy. And people yeah. think... People oh, are a little surprised. It's, it's, it it, it, it is, can it, get expensive depending on, you know, your trip costs and your age and your state of residency. You know, it just depends. I always quote the supplier, meaning the cruise line or the tour operator's insurance. It could sometimes be cheaper, but also look at the coverage versus a third-party insurance. I love Allianz and I have a few customized policies with them and they have some great coverage and they have different types of coverage. So some policies are a little more affordable than others, but they still have great coverage. What are some of the so. things that are like options? Do they give like a deductible or? No, how do they do they're it? usually it's your medical, the big ones. It's the medical coverage and your emergency evacuation. It, the smaller amount that they cover, like say 25000 a person for medical and say 500000 per person for a medical evacuation, those policies tend to be a little cheaper. There are some policies that are 50000 per person medical and a million for emergency evacuation. Also, there are some policies that have more coverage for covered reasons, reasons that you c cancel something or have an emergency. That's a covered reason, meaning you, you or a family member get sick or injured. Um, this is before this, your trip even starts. Or while you're traveling. It's both. But yes, bigger reason is for canceling. There are some policies that are canceled for any reason, which means any reason. Like, I just don't want to go. But you got to look at the policy. Is it a cash refund? Is it a credit? Is it 80%? Is it 90% back? You know, there's a lot of nuances to these insurance policies. Yeah. So could you clarify the pre-existing conditions? So well, that's you, another good one. Yeah, Thank there's, you. there's, uh, I've heard you talk to, to clients about that before. Could you talk about that concept? Yeah, there's a waiver that insurance policies will have, and they call it a pre-existing medical condition waiver. And that what that means is if you meet certain criterias that they've set out, then there's this waiver included where, where they will not do a look back 60 days, 100 days, 120 days, whatever it is. Um, but if you don't meet those criterias, then they're going to look back at your medical history if you submit a claim for medical whether it's while you're traveling or before, and that's the reason why you're canceling. So for instance, Allianz that I sell, it depends on the policy, but if you buy a certain policy within 15 days of your first trip deposit, then it includes that waiver. No matter when you cancel the trip due to a medical reason, they won't do a look back. Mm. But if you buy it after the 15 days, it doesn't include the waiver. They'll look back 120 days at your medical records. Okay. There's another policy that you can buy uh, up until like your trip's final balance that will include the waiver. But if you buy it, say, within two weeks of your departure, it's not going to include it, that waiver. That's kind of the nuance. So what kind of that. situations would this apply? Yeah, for instance, even blood pressure. I, like I have high blood pressure. If I go to the doctor and I change my medication, if I cancel or have a medical emergency due to my blood pressure, I need to have that waiver in the, my policy or else when they look back, if it's within the 120 days, they won't pay that policy. Yeah. So in, in that case, so so in that situation, uh, if, you, if you buy it at the right time and you buy the right kind of policy, then medical things that occur before the trip can uh, 
protect you and exactly. the, the degree it could be 80% it could be 90% D- just depends some amount uh, of your trip would be protected even before you go yeah. so another thing to be consider yeah there's a few other stipulations in order to get that waiver there's like three or four of them but you need to buy it at, by the specific time for that policy you need to ensure all your non-refundable trip costs uh-huh. so anything that i handle has to go onto the policy you have to be healthy and able to travel the day that you buy the policy. That's another big one. Um, things like that. And obviously not be a known event. For instance, a hurricane or civil unrest. Once the hurricane or, or tropical storm or civil unrest is named, then it's not covered. For instance, we'll go with hurricane. Hur- hurricane Ivan comes in. If you bought your policy before that was a named storm, that's covered. If your policy has hurricane coverage, once Ivan is named is no longer a covered event. So if you buy your policy after a hurricane starts, don't think, oh, I'm going to buy insurance now because I see a hurricane and it might affect my trip. And then you would It's it's now a known event. Now, now it's It's everybody knew about it. It's in the papers. Exactly. Or um, civil unrest in other countries or when the war broke out in Ukraine. Those aren't covered events once the event actually happens, because insurance is for the unknown and unexpected. So we're talking about some big things. I, I hope we're kind of scaring people a little bit. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be alarmist, but I think people just and I think I think people, people think, and I'll think about this before. Nothing's going to happen to them. And, yeah. I, and you and I traveled for decades without any travel insurance. Exactly. And thank God nothing happened. But I think we were pretty oblivious. You think you're young and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you know. It's kind of a, a no win gamble because you go to Vegas and you put money on a uh, on a bet. There is an upside. Mm-hmm. There is no upside by gambling on your travel. There's only downside. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So it's worth you know, it. Why why would you? Yeah. So we talk about some of the big things that can go wrong, but there's also I think a, a lot of value in some of the incidentals. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you know if you get travel insurance and like your luggage. Mm. disappears yes so now your whole wardrobe's in the ocean or gone (laughs) or uh, we had flight hiccups Mm -hmm. and we opted to drive back from that city and we rented a car and that was completely covered Mm -hmm. and things like that so maybe you could talk about some of those incidentals yeah there's there's other coverage in in addition to the medical and the emergency evacuation there's trip delay trip interruption lost luggage delayed luggage If you are delayed coming home for a reason, for instance, of course, flight delays or flight issues, and you have to stay the night and come home the next day, that could be covered under the trip delay. Uh, We had to drive home. Our car rental was covered because we our flight got canceled and we decided to drive home. Uh, A a big adventure in itself. (laughs) Eight eight hours overnight. Yes. With Allianz and certain policies, if I put in the flight information, if Allianz sees that your flight is delayed, the minimum hours noted in the policy, they will automatically send you $100 per person. No questions asked, no receipts, no claim. They'll just send you $100 per person. You'll get a text or an email that says, how do you want your money? And if you incur additional costs on top of that, like a hotel room or clothes or a toothbrush that's over the $100 per person, you can submit a claim when you get home with receipts. How easy are they to work with in general? I don't, you don't need to speak to anybody specifically, but claims, are they like going to... Most are good. Is, yeah. yeah. And obviously the pandemic really hit them hard. Uh, there was a lot of claims and post pandemic, there were a lot of flight claims, but I think they've caught up and they're they're processing pretty quickly nowadays. And they just need some documentation. You know, if you're canceling for a medical reason, they need a note from the doctor and some other co- confirmation receipts that you're not getting a refund. So you're not double dipping proof that you've paid for the trip, things like that. So it's it's pretty easy to submit a claim. Get The payments are coming out pretty quickly. OK, so as long as you've bought the right coverage at the right time mm-hmm. and you're making the right kind of claims, mm-hmm. which I think you've, you've guided people through this many times, so then it's the it feels like the insurance companies are kind of on your side in this scenario. Mm-hmm. They seem to want to be a partner uh, with the travelers. Yeah. I mean, if you end up in a hospital in a country, the insurance company, at least the ones like Allianz that I deal with, they're going to call you. They're going to make sure that you're OK. And if a family member has to come and fly in to be with you, they're going to handle all that. So you really have someone 
on your team mm-hmm. to help you with those logistics when you're in a foreign country. I mean, that's huge. Yeah. And then just to be clear, you can get insurance either through a big global company mm-hmm. like Allianz, or you could get it through your your cruise company, yeah, uh, cruise, cruise company, or your tour operator, you know, the, whatever travel supply. Like Talc, supply. Talc has mm-hmm. their own or Viking has their own or Alma exactly. Waterways has their own. Okay. Yeah, well, they, they partner with companies, but you can buy it through them. But just double check the coverage and make sure that it's what you need. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how strongly would you recommend travel insurance to 15. people? <laughs> 15. Okay. I think it's so risky. If you could lose $20,000 on your vacation, that's one thing. I think losing $100,000 or your life because you don't have insurance for while you're traveling is just not smart. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, unfair to put that burden on your family uh, Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Today, we're not talking about some wonderful location, but I hope that you could feel our passion for this. I think it's really important that people take this seriously and think about it and not just live in their kind of bubble and just assume that everything is going to work out. So important. Hopefully it does. Let's yeah. all, you know, think optimistically that, yeah. that you never <laughs> have to call him up and say, hey, how does this policy work? Exactly. But, you know, the, the peace of mind is just the way to go. So final thoughts on that? Yes, just do it with every trip or buy an annual policy, just have coverage some way, somehow. Let's do it. Excellent. Well, let's Thank get insured. Guys. Yes. Get insured, grab your passport and let's go. All right. Thanks for listening to Passport Required. Please be sure and join the Silverleaf Travel Facebook page so that we can connect with you. It is also a great place to share your own travel tips, experiences, and wisdom with the Silverleaf Travel community. If you got something out of this episode, we would love it if you would subscribe and also give us a rating and review. We always want to get better and we will read all of your comments and suggestions for topics so that we can make this podcast the best resource possible. My name is Gary Covert. And I'm Kim Covert. Thanks for listening and thank you for being a part of the Silverleaf Travel Community. 